I'm in the corporate facility here at Snug Oval <laughs> with the lovely Juanita Stanton, who's bought her way under football life. Juanita, how did you get here? Well, that was through an auction that Triple T held, raising money for prevention of youth suicide. So when I made the top bid, here I am. What are you expecting today? <laughs> I started off. <laughs> what are you expecting today? Oh, just a day of laughs, I think. You've had a few already. I have. have, you I got, have. You've had it yet? I think so, more so. <laughs> <laughs> what about uh, the big clash today for the Steel Family Shield? Who do you think is going to get up? Oh, we'll go for Channel. Yeah, why is that? Well, they've won the last two, so we'll go for three, I you've, think. You've done your research, mm, haven't you? Yeah. yeah. What is it you love about? What is it you love about footy? <laughs> The shorts. Mm. Mm. Why is that? How could you not love a pair of black shorts? Oh, okay. Mm. They're quite cute, some of these guys, aren't they? Not bad. <laughs> you, you, in the club rooms after the game? Yeah, I was just going to say, <laughs> do we get in there? Or... <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> we gave Juanita some details on the history of Channel Football Club, propped her on the half forward flank and said, action. From the ashes of the 1967 bushfires that devastated southern Tasmania came the Channel Football Club. Originally they wore the Longley colours until 1998 when they adopted St Kilda's New Guernsey. Channel have had grand final success in the Hill on eight occasions and also won the SFL grand final in 1996. Today they're playing Kingston for the Steel Family Shield. Kent, the Steel Family Shield uh, started because your father and about four of your uncles are playing in the area? Uh, yeah, there's always been a uh, good tradition with the Steel Family, uh, we're a large family and We've all sort of, uh, you know, played football in the area, and uh, you know, there's, there's a big rivalry between the two clubs. And uh, you know, I always enjoy playing against Channel. Uh, it was tough for me to, to decide to play with Kingston, and once I did, um, you know, I had to be 100% behind that decision. And uh, it's very tough when we come up against Channel. Yeah. So your family traditionally mostly play with Channel, but now you and your brother are playing for Kingston. When you're down playing against Channel, what's the vibe from the Channel supporters? Oh, I think most of them think that, uh, you know, Mark and myself really probably should be down there. And, uh, you know, I'd, I'd definitely fit in fine if I was down there as well. But uh, I've made the decision to play at Kingston and, you know, that's where I'll be. Hoping to play first here in the SFL if it's two-tiered next year? Uh, it would depend on a lot of things, like the club's uh, tried to be a bit more professional this year and it's, you know, we've still got a fair way to go with the ground and facilities here that aren't quite up to scratch at the moment. Um, but obviously, yeah, that's what, you know, a lot of the blokes would be aiming for, yeah. Tell us about the Oval here, is it big enough? Oh, it's not really, no, and at the moment it's in terrible condition, uh, but it's what we've got, so that's about all we can, uh, all we can do at the moment. The, uh, there has been, been a proposal for a new ground, but uh, it doesn't seem to be going ahead. It's yeah, years in the making, I think, yeah. Even, even though they're well below you on the ladder this year, you still expect a pretty tough game? Oh, we do, yeah. Like, it's happened in years gone by. The last two years that I've, always, I've played here, um, we've been on top or higher up than they have, and they've come back, and vice versa as well. So, yeah. A decent crowd was gathering for this clash for the Steel Family Shield, including notable former football administrators and politicians. But I decided to head into the club rooms to catch up with Diamond Des Monaghan, who's a stalwart of the Channel Football Club and a collector of footy memorabilia, including these old Channel and Snug jumpers. But Diamond Des's prized possession are his footy boots, including this signed pair by Daryl Baldock, which have these unique leather stops with three nails sticking out the end. Apparently the stops are banged right into the sole of the footy boot, sometimes going right through the material into the player's foot, which just goes to show how tough the players were in those days. Tell us, today you're playing Kingston, you have a strong rivalry, rivalry with Kingston? Oh my word, yeah, I just absolutely love these Channel Kingston games. I think I'd rather watch a Channel Kingston game than any AFL game. Does it get physical out in the ground? It certainly does, yes, and gets physical in the crowd sometimes. <laughs> Tell us about, uh, there's an incident many years ago, Channel and Kingston, about some Savaloys, I believe. Yes, yes, many years ago, uh, all the ladies in those days, this is about my grandfather's time, the, the ladies committee at Snake went to all the trouble to cook the Savaloys and the cakes they used to make with the icing and lamingtons, you can imagine in those days. And uh, 
Anyway, when Kingston were winning, they were saying, oh, we're going to come over and eat all your savage lies. Anyway, Channel ended up winning, uh, sorry, Snuggy ended up winning the game and not one Kingston person came over to eat the savage lies or the cakes. <laughs> now, you have a very famous ex-footballer called Noel Morrison. That's what right. was he like? Oh, he was a great player, Noel Morrison. I can remember the first night... Um, uh, Robbie Naylor brought him down, uh, they were insurance together and I can remember the first night I seen Noel and I remember thinking, wow, Fancy Channel getting such a famous great player as what Noel Morrison was, because he was a big name up at Sandy Bay at the time. Was he the sort of player that waited for the easy kick or did oh, he go in no, hard? no, not Murray, no, he went in and got the hard ball. <laughs> That first night that he came here, did he stay for a couple of beers afterwards? Oh yes, he stopped for a couple, a couple of dozen that is. <laughs> <laughs> I believe in those days Morrow got up to some antics, did he do a few personality type stunts? Oh yes, uh, we used to have uh, what's called Hey Hey Saturdays and nights like that and Morrow used to be one of the stars of those. Formed in 1895, Kingston played their first game against North Hobart in Risdon. Following World War II they became known as the Tasmanian Tigers. Kingston have won four premierships and during the 90s played eight grand finals in a row. AFL players Trent Nichols and Shane Stevenson both came from Kingston. The Channel boys sitting 15th on the ladder ran out in the ground while our work experience journalist Juanita was in charge of formalities. She tossed the coin, Channel 1 and decided to kick towards the sea. They had a quick hug and a G up before the game started. And in the first seconds of the game, Swords had this opportunity to put them in front, but he Beaumonted the ball towards the front of the goal square. But in a bizarre turn of events, Adam Newton grabbed the ball and bombed it back in board. Swords took a second mark within 30 seconds, and this time had the opportunity from even closer to put Channel in front, and he made no mistake this time. Channel leading the game early. But Kingston got better and better as the first half went on, and made Channel pay costly for some of their skill errors and some of their turnovers and went to the half-time break with a six-goal lead. Meanwhile, I'd noticed this character that was wearing all ray of sporting gear and following us around the ground. I decided to look more closely and find out exactly who this bizarre figure really was. Now, I've noticed you walking round and round the ground wearing all of this gear. Firstly, who are you? Uh, my name's Ken Hardley. Do you always sit here? I do, yes, yes. This is the Ken Hardley stand. <laughs> right, and uh, do you always come to the footy here, Ken? Oh, when I'm in the country, I do, Doug, yeah. Um, I've got a weekend off this weekend. We've just come back from England. Uh, had a tennis tournament over there. Pretty well. We made the final for the second year in a row, but lost out. Um, got to head back next week for a cricket match. Uh, the boys have drilled really well in the first game. We won it in under four days. Gives them plenty of the weekend off. So I'm back in Tassie for the weekend. Ken, why do you always have a golf stick and a squash racket and a football with you? Um, it, like, the schedule nowadays is so tight that we have to be prepared, mate. Like, it's on the plane, off the plane, straight to a tournament. And, like, there's just... The pressure is on from, from the start. So, yeah, you've got to be prepared. Do you think this game between Channel and Kingston compares with some of the great international clashes? It will do, yes. Yes, it will do. Uh, Diamond Des will see to that. Um, but, yeah, it'll go down. Channel battled hard in the second half, led by Sean Satori but they just weren't good enough on the day. In fact, they didn't add to the half-time tally of five goals, although they put some good passages together and there was certainly still plenty of spirit in the game. They just weren't able to hold Kingston, who were sitting in eighth position and looking towards the finals. They were more skillful on the day, had more run through the midfield and better options up forward, including Andrew Denton, who took mark after mark and threaded several through the middle. Kingston running out quite easy winners on the day, 15-12-102 to channel 5-9-39. Now, uh, today you've, you've got up over Channel, so you've won the Steele Family Shield after they beat you a couple of times last year. Even though they're much lower on the ladder than you, it's always a uh, passionate game against Channel. Yeah, well, we treated today um, seriously, mainly for the reasons you said. And um, for our aspirations to make the finals, we had to win, win and um, hopefully win well. Now, Steve McQueen's out there, we noticed today, and he must be... Well into his 40s, yeah, does that mean there's a chance of you making a comeback? I don't know whether he's 40 or not, but um, he had a reasonable day today. Um, I will not be making a comeback. Not even in the twos? <laughs> no way. Propping it full pocket? It's tempting, but no way. In the club rooms after the game, Juanita was getting on very well with the boys from Channel. 
so much so that I decided to give her a microphone and get her to go and grab a few interviews for us. At first the boys were a bit reluctant to talk, but it didn't take the fellas long to open up to young Juanita. I found somebody that wants to talk to me, his name's Emu. Why Emu? Uh, because I can run so quick and bounce a ball and kick goals so quick. Great skill to have. Now when did you first start playing? Oh, look, back in 1979 I think it was. How many games since then? Oh, 250, 260. Have you ever played in the ruck? Yeah, if the ball comes near me and I have to go up for the ruck, I'll go up for it. I don't care how big they are. Do you like Biff? Of course you do. Now Channel's got a pretty big social side, hasn't it? Yeah, lots. Uh, every year we put on a players review of some sort. Um, remember one back in 88, we did a Hey Hey It's Channel. We had all the, all the proper characters, Daryl Summers and... We had Aussie Emu, uh, instead of Aussie Ostrich, Emu was Aussie Emu and uh, there's a lot of uh, different acts on there. One, one people did Perfect Snatch instead of Perfect Match. Uh, it's quite a lot like that, yeah. I won't go into that, but is there a lot of beer involved? Uh, quite a bit, yeah. If, we, uh, if we, everyone remembers the end of the night, it's, uh, you've done a good job. What's the best beef you've ever had? Oh, look, I can't think of that. Oh, numerous, been numerous. Now, how did Channel feel losing the Shield back to Kingston after two years? Oh, he's still disappointed, yeah, because you do. Especially to Kingston, you know, the rivalry we got. Yeah. Yeah, why is that rivalry? Oh, because we know each other so well, and most people go to school with each other and things like that, you know. It's always will be.